see Occupy as such an expression of human worth, human dignity, and a refusal to abide by the moral exclusion of poor people for being poor. This idea that if you are a hard worker and you are a good person, everything will be fine. And of course, the flip side of that is if things aren't fine, if you're working 65 hours a week and you still can't make ends meet, well, then there must be something morally wrong with you. And it's because of that logic that's so deeply ingrained in all of us that that becomes the moral excuse making for cutting more and more services to the poor and giving it to the Pentagon and giving it to the banks and giving it to those who are already millionaires. That is the soul of what Occupy is attempting to change. One of the most vocal constituencies within Occupy are people who don't want just incremental reform, um, who want a system overhaul. I think it's actually to Occupy's credit for channeling a lot of what otherwise could be incredibly explosive, incredibly destructive anger. Um, what continues to propel Occupy forward is a really powerful um, experience of hope. And the sense that there's more to being part of a country or a society or a community or a state um, than just having one political identity and defending it to death. That actually policies that affect me, affect you, affect everyone else. And so that's sort of, you know, going back to what has been this incredible tradition in Minnesota of this awareness of your neighbors and awareness of the needs of others. I hope that's not lost.